Do a CT scan, money from my brain. Good night, everybody. Welcome to Common Sense, episode one, featuring your boy Matthew Gall, and two very special guests, Mr. Will Campbell, a psychotherapist and a lecturer from the University of Guyana, and Guyana's favorite rapper, entrepreneur, poet, Kareem Lewis, also known as C. Kush. And tonight we're going to be discussing your money mindsets and how you operate with money mentally and how your mentality affects your decisions and how that ultimately affects your destiny. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Share the live, uh, tag a friend, like the Facebook page, and tune into Common Sense. Money is the root of all evil. Money don't grow on trees. Money can't bring you happiness. Rich people are evil people. These are some of the common things that you hear growing up about money in your home or in your community. And tonight we want to examine the impact that some of those phrases would have on our lives as we evolve as adults and as we grow. So, good night, fellas. Thank you for being here. And I want to ask you guys, what was your experience like growing up as it relates to money? What did you hear from your parents? What did you hear from your siblings? What did you hear from your grandparents or your community leaders? What did you really hear about money? Right, so I'll go first. And um, I grew up in a family where there was always, it was always a bit of a struggle to make ends meet. It wasn't that we were dirt poor. I wouldn't say that we were poverty stricken, but there was always a little bit of a struggle to you know, to reconcile expenses with, with income. Um, and some of the things that I would hear, because my mom was the money manager in the home, some of the things that I would hear from her um, included that, you know, included no matter how little you make, you must put aside a little bit. Um, one of the things that she said that I think impacted me way into adulthood was this whole idea that Campbell's, referring to my father's um, branch of the family, Campbell's are not good at making money. Um, I grew up in church and I, I feel now, you know, in retrospect that somehow the common understanding in church, I'm not sure whether it was intentional, but somehow the common understanding in church was that, you know, it was, it was a sin to be rich. Riches are bad. Things like, you know, it's easy for a camel to go through an eye, the eye of a needle and for a rich man to make it in the kingdom of God. You heard things like, uh, uh, lay not yourselves treasures in earth. Mm -hmm. where moth and rust doth corrupt, you know, you know, lay, lay your treasures up in heaven, that kind of thing. And so it felt like it was wrong to want to be rich. So those are some of the things um, that, you know, we heard about money. And I think, I know for sure that it did have an impact, mm -hmm. you know, uh, later on in life. I can relate to some of those as well growing up as a church boy. But we want to hear now from the guy from Lodge. What was it like growing up as it relates to money for you? Well, with some of the stuff that uh, Mr. Campbell just uh, spoke about, um, it's quite relatable to some extent. Uh, for me, I grew up in a single parent household. So with regards to money and what's not, my mother was the sole breadwinner for everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the idea and the uh, discipline she has instilled in me at a young age was that, you know, uh, just be contented. Mm -hmm. And whatever come about, make do with it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how things happening, but I just used to see things happening. Mm -hmm. I know she got to work, and when she finished working, and she reached back home, food on the table. table. They understand me. So the idea that she gave me, and she instilled in me, this, this entire principle of contentment, I didn't really used to look for much. You understand me? I didn't really used to go out there, you know, uh, I see in you there around your friends, them, and you know, they get related to certain things. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. wasn't fascinated about those kind of stuff and then as time progressed you know things change in the household and when things change that's when i realized that you know we didn't i i didn't have no discipline whatsoever with regards to cash understand so that was it contentment was the word <laughs> yeah all right transitioning from our households now to the wider society and our culture uh mr campbell already touched on religion well, I want to touch now on education, um, music, movies, um, popular culture. 
what teachings did you garner from money, especially as a rapper, right? I know you're very versed in music and all these kind of stuff. What lessons do you think um, you would have heard coming out from songs as a youth? Pure ignorance. <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be quite honest with you, um, the, idea, the idea that a lot of individuals would think about with regards to individuals in the, in the entertainment industry is that, you know, you got to have this flashy lifestyle, you got to get 10 million chain, you got to looking like this and, you know, the exterior is also good, but the interior is also not so good. Do you understand me? And I really didn't use to, I didn't cling to that aspect. And that was uh, because the same thing with mommy, with the content contentment thing. You understand me? So it was like, you know what? Uh, this is not based on what you're hearing these people talking about or what these people saying about it. It's all about your talent and what you bring into the table as well with regards to entertainment. So. The only, the only, I, I could, I could off but one of the only artists I probably listened to that had anything sensible to say with regards to um, finances and money, well, two I could speak about, would be Rick Ross and um, Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Yeah. I feel you. I, and the thing is, as a youth growing up, um, I think when I was in high school, the popular guy was Vibes Carter. And... Though lyrically blessed, some of his lyrics um, inculcated some, I would say, wrong habits as it relates to the way we interact and relate with money. Because you would hear stuff like, me want a million dollar by a morning, and me want to trail a load of money, me want fast cash, grab this stash. As a psychotherapist, what sort of impacts would hearing those lyrics and songs have on a youth, his mental um, approach to finances? Yeah, a lot of, uh, we, we underestimate the impact of popular culture as broadcast by the media on, on the way we see life, the way we, we think about things, but it does have a really powerful impact. I mean, this has been tested and experimented upon and, and, and replicated over and over, that what you here constantly has an impact. It, it kind of conditions your brain to think in a certain way. So, I mean, when we listen to music, we listen to a lot of the same songs over and over and over. We right. might not even perceive that it is doing something to us, but it does change um, the way we see things. And um, uh, popular media glamorizes certain kinds of behaviors coming from certain kinds of people. So you look and you see these people wearing a hundred chains and you, mm -hmm. you know, you spending out your whole little, you know, four week money you save mm -hmm. up for four weeks and mm -hmm. then you buy one chain and you mm -hmm. you, you know you brocks the rest of the mm -hmm. and, and and so it does it you know it as long as you keep exposing yourself to a certain kind of stimulus pardon <laughs> pardon me here you, ex you expose yourself to a certain kind of stimulus all the time after a while it has it it, it sways your thinking in a certain direction i feel you definitely and one more aspect of uh the impact that money would have on our mindsets is certain specific incidents that happened in our childhood. So for example, when I was at Green Acres, uh, we had a football team, but at that point, I could not afford to buy a pegs. Everybody else on the team had their um, football gear, but I couldn't afford uh, a peg. So I was going to school in my school shoes, playing football in my school shoes, um, couldn't get chin pads and those stuff, until later on in life. And there are certain traumatic, specific incidents in our lives that affect us as we get older. And sometimes you, don't, you never understand. I was reading a story about a man who, his parents tried to make him think as though getting rich is such a bad thing. And eventually got a high paying job. And he said because he was trained to think that, you know, Getting rich means you're evil or you're greedy or you're raw persons or you don't pay your taxes or these kind of stuff. He just started to squander the money and he was always asking himself, why am I wasting my money? And then when he went to a seminar that was discussing something similar like this, he realized that those specific words and those specific actions that he would have heard and experienced as a youth impacted him as an adult. So how do specific incidents impact you as you grow older and how do you deal with traumatic financial in incidents? 
Um, so I'm going to start with the second question, which is sometimes making the change, healing the trauma in terms of your, 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 your viewpoint about money is simply about becoming aware of what that trauma is. And mm. let me, for example, I, I mentioned earlier that my mom always made me feel like I was never going to you know, be able to manage money well because I'm a Campbell. Mm. And so I got a job that was stable and I would not let that job go for anything. You know, so other opportunities came up, I, I, you know, opportunities to get into business, opportunities to do things that would, you know, the, the finances wouldn't be stable, mm -hmm. but um, it would come. And I, I, I ran away from those things for 25 years of my professional life. I just had one job as a teacher. I was afraid to venture out into business. So it, it you know, I, I didn't until much later realize that the reason I stuck holding on to this job that I didn't want to do in the first place for 25 whole years was because somehow I had gotten into my mind the script, the idea that I would not succeed anywhere else. It, it, was, it, it took, first of all, an awareness that this is why I'm not doing it. This is why I'm not moving. And then it took a whole lot of willpower to realize that, look, listen, the fact that you, even if it is true that Campbell's have a, a track record of doing poorly in terms of money, mm -hmm. you don't have to continue, you don't have to perpetuate that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it, you know, it, it was really risky. The moving, leaving, teaching mm -hmm. was <laughs> a scary experience for me. Something as simple as that. Definitely. And Kush, uh, as a youth from large, because both of us are from large, I heard you talking about contentment and how you never allow the popular culture to impact your, um, your mentality. How is it possible for a young person, for a youth, to maintain that mental strength to, even if you see everybody rocking the latest jewelry from Jacob's Jewelry or driving the fancy cars or got the latest Gucci belt and the latest clothing, how do you stay mentally firm and not allow that to pressure you into chasing after those things? I, I, I believe it, it, it comes in a space where why individuals, everybody would like to mimic somebody. Right. You understand? Uh, everybody got this idea like to succeed, you got to take the road that this person took. Or well, well me, I have a very rebellious spirit. I'm a very rebellious person. I, I don't believe in if this way working for this man, I got to do the same thing that he's doing. Correct. I believe in individuality. You True, understand me? You understand? So you have to be you. And understanding being you is making do with what you have. Correct. You understand me? And shaping your, I don't even know what you want to call it, your alias, your persona, whatever it is that you portray out there in society. Correct. I just believe that if you stick to who you are and work with what you have now, you will have no problem whatsoever trying to, you know what I mean, operate or act outside of what you're earning or what you're gaining. You understand me? Definitely, so, definitely. If I, if I could jump in here, that, yeah. that comes with the, the conditioning to be content. Yeah. Right. You know, being content is also about being happy with who you yeah. are so that you don't feel like you've got to... Comfortable in your own yeah, space. Comfortable in your own <laughs> skin so that you don't feel like yeah. you've got to be like anybody else. You, yeah. you, this is you and you're good. So that, that shows us the power of parents because his mother instilled in him contentment. And I think something that is lacking in our society is that we don't even discuss money in our homes. Like, you would reach 80 and this is the first time you have an understanding of what really is your financial situation. Like, you don't hear your parents coming and telling you Many times, especially persons from uh, poor neighborhoods or um, persons like from single parent uh, families, you don't hear your parents coming and teach you, hey, you need to save, you need to invest, you need to do this. There's no discussions about money. So as a parent, what advice would you give to parents in terms of teaching their children about money from a young age? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start here. One of the problems we got with parenting and money, parenting about money, is that as parents, we want our children to have all of the things that we didn't have, and mm. sometimes that's a mistake. Mm. I think that we should allow our children to you know, work as hard so that we can have our children have 
the opportunities that we didn't have, but mm -hmm. the things, not necessarily. Hmm. Um, because a lot of those things, they don't need. Yeah. And so when you give children, you know, you go out of your way to make sure that children have everything that you didn't have. What, what, what they grow up with is a sense of entitlement and they feel like, you know what, we're supposed to have this. Mm -hmm. So let me use, share a little experience. So, um, you know, by the time children came along, I was doing I was fairly comfortably financially in the mm -hmm. sense that I wasn't living paycheck to paycheck anymore. And I remember once my daughter, you know, both, both of them were, you know, they were going to private schools and so on. And one of them said, you know, daddy, don't bring us, don't, don't come up the hill to the school. Stop us down here so, and, and, and we walk up. And I said, why? And she said, all my friends, the parents have SUVs. You got this little car. You know? <laughs> and she was just maybe seven or eight at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, they thought that we were poor. Mm -hmm. They thought that we were dirt poor simply because we had a sedan and everybody else had an SUV. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we weren't living in, in Ghana at the time. And everybody in the neighborhood were, you know, handling reasonable amount of money. So we, we had to make a, we, we had to show them what, what poor felt like. Mm. We had to show them what poor felt like. And if you give me another minute, one of the things that we did, because they felt like money just came, you just went to the ATM and you withdrew money. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we did was one day, we had them sit down and list all of the things that we need to get in a, in a month. And you know, my wife and I, we, sh we showed them our pay slip. So this is what we earn. Now, you showed them your pay slip? You showed them our pay slips. So th this net income here, this is what we get to take home. Mm. And so they've already made the list of all of the things that we need to pay. We showed them the electricity bill and, and we tell them, told them, make this money do. Make this money pay all of these bills. And they couldn't do it. And, you know, we had them do the, the financial planning, if you will, the, the budgeting for, for, for about two or three months. And then they, they were like, you know, I don't know how you all make this happen. Hmm. And it was then that they, they started to develop a consciousness about money. Correct. You know, before that, they felt like you, you just go to the ATM and withdraw and it was there. That's why you would always hear parents, and especially Guyanese parents, money don't go on trees. You got to show it to them. Definitely. So... As we, as we move along in our conversation tonight, we want to zero in on our minds now and our mentality. Firstly, I want to ask you, Kush, what do you think to be a rich life? Like, what is your vision of what it means to be rich? Is it mean, does, does it mean that you need a mansion and uh, three Audis or uh, you need... Latest gold chain. When you sit down and think, firstly, have you ever even thought about being rich? No, nah, I, I, I don't even like the word rich. You don't like the word rich? No. Mm. What, what word do you like? I <laughs> like wealthy. Wealthy. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> what is the difference between being rich and being wealthy? Riches, riches here today and gone tomorrow. With wealth, you have longevity. Longevity. You know me? And I talk in generational, generational wealth. wealth. I, I, I feel that that. In, in a lot of homes, majority of the homes that, are, that I know about and I'm a favorite because of where I grew up, mm -hmm. you understand me? We don't have what you call and I learned all this when I'm big. Mm -hmm. I understand how, how much money costs when I get big. Mm -hmm. I understand the value of money when I get big. That's when I start working, you understand me? So after I start going around and start having conversation with all the folk, you understand me? Because young people don't really get on for share with me. I went out and we had a few conversations about generational wealth and I, I i keep asking them you know well, why every time mm -hmm. it's like in the area everybody just resetting mm -hmm. it's like you're hitting a reset button all the time nobody ain't like you know passing on a baton for set or you know hey you take it from here right. and then go down and then i started i realized that this and this thing i'll be like a bubble or a trap because i don't really like this routine like i tell you i already i'm a rebellious force mm -hmm. I said, I got to see something different. I want to see something different. And I, started, I met a few other individuals outside of the space that I live in, and I realized that, you know, hey, it's my car. How long are you in this car, boy? How long are you driving? Me, I drive in since I was nine, ten, ten, ten. It's like, what? Oh, you drive in since you was nine? <laughs> you understand me? Yeah, my father put me in the car, and I think, 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 I drive in since XYZ age. 
in my area, you driving probably to your store, some fun, something. Facts. Mm-hmm. You understand where I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. So this when I realized that, you know, hey, all right, this car is not, wasn't the best of cars this guy had. Mm-hmm. So it moved in. You Definitely. understand? It's probably a 212 or something. We get it from him. Tell me he filed a gift. And he filed out get his own car. His sister can't drive yet. You understand? But she don't know who drive before me. Listen, I having this conversation with this guy. I big, I is 20 or something. Me ain't driving yet. Me even know if you tell me, hey, you could have tell me around the time you go in the car, start it, let's see it, pull down the handbrake, sex, I didn't know these kind of things. Yet. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So I was like, you know, I want something like that for me, family. You understand? I want something like that for me. I need, I need, I need that kind of race within me race. So, so uh, let me understand. Basically, when you encountered all the persons, wise persons, that is when you came to that consciousness of the importance of generational wealth and being wealthy and not being rich. Mm-hmm. So you I, 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 we, we got rich people in we community right mm-hmm. now. In large garage people. Garage people in large? In large <laughs> garage people. And, and the reason why I can tell you garage people, mm. how much shop they in large? Enough. Large get my shop. And these people own the shop. To some extent. <laughs> you understand? Definitely. Okay. To some extent, they own the shop. You understand? I mean, then they got, they got the same shop going to close down. Mm-hmm. They know for manager. What's the name of the shop, too? Huh? Because <laughs> another man shop my name. Kush and Sons. And Sons. Uh, you want name Kush? No, it just name shop. Yes, yeah. name shop. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, right? it just, you just yeah. know it's the shop by the car now. You understand uh, me? So it's within the space. Like, they got rich people around there, but it, the money is just here today and then it's gone tomorrow. Generational wealth. Jay-Z said generational wealth, that's the key. As a father, how heavy is that on your mind? Oh, that's a big deal for me. Mm. That's a big deal for me. One of the things I observed, and you, you talk about this constant reset, is what mm. happens is you make something for you, mm-hmm. and then your children praying for your dad so they could guess, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. they could, and so they could fight over what you made for mm-hmm. you. And I feel like if I could give them something long before I die, then I could rest comfortably in what I built for myself. So I'm giving them a start. And what a lot of us are doing is we, make, we, we, we have children and expect them to pour into this dying generation. So our children, whatever money they make, they got to invest in, in me who, mm-hmm. you know, my mother is still rotten in for the grave because, mm-hmm. you know, when you reach, reach far, you start to decline. Um, some of us before, but we want to talk about it today. <laughs> <laughs> you just brought up something that I didn't even plan on touching, but I'm glad that you brought it up. And what we call that is... This might be a, th- a tough word, but in financial terms, they call it financial incest, whereby as a young man, you are now put into that position whereby you have to be the provider for your family. And for me, um, that is not the ideal way, but I understand that, uh, especially growing up in a single parent family, because I'm from a single parent family, I have to... Now, we invest what I'm earning now into ensuring that the house is good, into ensuring that my mom is taken care of properly. Meanwhile, another guy who grows up in a two-parent family, all of the bills are paid by his parents. He's using his money now to develop himself as in whether buy a car or get some land. But my, uh, my adolescence phase in terms of uh, me being able to transition out to an adult and invest in myself is sort of stunted because of the family situation. So how, how can we allow our young people to not have to use their resources to put it back into the family but begin to charter a road for themselves and propel uh, and begin to plant the seed for their families and their generation. Mr. Campbell, before, you see, this, this is, this is um, I like this, you understand me, because I, I had a conversation with a few of my um, friends, you understand me, big people, big men, mm-hmm. and this is, doesn't come off as harsh as possible, but I really don't care. I feel as though you fail as a parent mm-hmm. if your child don't mind you. Mm. I just feel like 
you fail as a parent if you put your child in a space whereby remember now you child can go and have their family you know mm-hmm. and then this is a thing we've been passed now for generation and generation in Guyana you understand generation on generations have been taught this say that you know hey when I get old you got to take care of me mm-hmm. you understand but can you for nine months what <laughs> and then not nine months ago nine months, months, you know, 18 I, sometimes you're 20 I you grow you till you come man you understand what I'm yeah. from and then then you roll with the idea now, I'm putting the burden on you. Sure. To come. Right. And then, and it, it's the same thing that I touched on before with regards to the reset. You just keep resetting. But mm-hmm. if, 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 you, if you establish yourself in a certain way to make sure that your source of income, some people, pension and all, mm-hmm. could cover them for, you know what I mean, till whenever they're ready for yourself. You understand me? Definitely. You, you know what's name? You understand me? So I feel as though you feel as a parent if you pass on that burden to your child and that's something that's something that's something that restrict me at a certain age from even trying to operate within the space you know a thinking for go forward and impregnate a young lady and know that you know hey buddy if i can go tell my child this here so mm. i i i can't live with it yeah, you bro, me? sorry you, you finish that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel I feel encouraged to hear young men talking like that because I don't hear this a lot from, mm. from young people. Mm. Uh, you know, I feel really encouraged. And one of the ways, I mean, listen, no matter how poor you are, you could plan for your own retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, let us, if I got a sweetie stand, I could, <laughs> I could pay NIS from a sweetie stand. I think it'd be a whole lot, but then, you know, when I can't sit down in this Jew and sell sweetie no more, I got you know, a, a monthly something that can buy the food for me. Definitely. Um, so y- y- you can plan for your own future and you owe it to yourself and your children to plan for your own future. Definitely. Um, you know, and, and what you said, it, it might be harsh, but that's reality. If, if, if I don't plan for my own future so that my, my, my children have to now neglect their own development their, and their future mm. to come back and, and mind me, mm. I have failed. I have failed, and so we have to we, we, we have to plan for our own retirement, and mm-hmm. we have to get to a place where, even you know, my mother used to say this: when when your children are ready to leave home, even if it's one spoon each, mm-hmm. you must be able to give somebody something, mm-hmm. rather than them having to turn back and feed you, you know. Hmm. So we, we gotta you, you plan for your own future and plan for your future generations. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm at the place where you know my, my parents did a really good job. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, they can see this. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were able to give us something for us. Mm-hmm. I am hoping that, you know, I can be able to give my children something for them and their children. And then, you know, I, mm-hmm. I hear them talking already about, you know, future generations. And mm-hmm. it comes from the kind of conversations that go on in the house. Mm-hmm. You know? Definitely. Definitely. So what we see coming out here tonight is the importance of generational wealth, the importance of excellent family planning and the importance of normalizing money conversations in the home, right? Don't wait until they're 20, until they're 25. Then you're introducing them to money because chances are they're going to struggle. And during that period is not the time to be struggling. You should already have that foundation. And unfortunately, we don't have it in our schools. I mean, we learn about the solar system. We learn about uh, plants. We learn about uh, water and all this stuff. But we don't know about our taxes. We don't know how to save. We don't know how to invest. We don't know how to budget. And I think that's something that we really need in our schools. But until we get that, common sense is going to bridge the gap in terms of educating our young people and our, and our adults. So as we transition in our conversation tonight, we want to touch quickly on the abundance mindset versus the poverty mindset. And I, I can use an example of athletes and rappers or even some successful businessmen who would have grown up in poor uh, conditions. Because of their talent and their skills, they would have been now experienced to, or exposed to wealth, become filthy rich, and then 10 years later, you read on the Kaito News or you scroll along on Facebook, Former NBA athlete, broke. Former football player, broke. And the reason for that, I believe, is because though the outward change, though the fruits change, the seed never changed, the inward never changed. And 
that is very important. So in terms of having an abundance mindset, do you, firstly, do you have an abundance mindset? If I have one, mm -hmm. I would say I had one. Had one? Like, like with regards to when I started making money, well, I started working, I started working straight out of school, I started working. But I was working before, but you know, mm -hmm. you understand? So I started getting money and I didn't understand the value of the money I get in. You understand? I know where a certain amount of my salary had to go, and then the rest is on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just know the rest is for you. Yeah. By beer. That, that is a poverty want, mindset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yes. By beer, and then mm -hmm. I, move out, I move out from this space mm -hmm. into another space and start earning more money. And when I earned more money, I still didn't understand the value of the money. So, more bad. Maurice. I just splurged it all over the place. I don't know, oh, at the end of the month, I'd put this here, so it's a light bill, or put this here, so to this bill, the bill, the bill, and then, yo, all this here, sit me on. This all I had in my mind up to a point in time, till I uh, restrict from the, from the cash flow, you understand me? I left the place where I was working at the time, cut everything nice, mm. you understand? So I got this whole idea that, you know, hey, more gonna come. But I feel, you know, for not being grateful for all, for these opportunities that I was presented that many individuals probably wanted. Mm -hmm. I had to learn a lesson and then know how to approach my finances differently. Correct. And that is when everything changed. So I would definitely say that I had the I had me little splurging moment. My moment of splurging and then I realized I learned about investing. Thank you to the staff of Bank of Guyana. They have a few of them there, you understand mm -hmm. me. Some of my some of the best individuals I've ever met with regards to teaching me about my finances and whatnot. Mm. I learned about a uh, fixed deposit account. Mm. I never know none but none like that. You understand me? No, 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 I say, hey, you're young, you're at this age, you, you, do you open a fixed deposit account, this amount you started with, here's where you're going, this is the interest rate at X, Y, Z, bam, 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 thing. But here, when you reach this age, you say, all this money here, so you can't take off this book. Mm. The whole fine, fine, fine areas, the kind of Beautiful. Too. And the, 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 Change my entire idea about money. I was like, wait, so this money could just stay here mm. and make money for me. Mm. So I was like, all right. Passive. You understand? I was like, all right. How else I could do this? Is? And this is when it opened my horizons you now to a whole different ball game outside. And I said to you, know, here, what? I can start this investing thing. I can look for areas in which I could put on this money. They can make money. And when I'm ready, this money gonna mind me. I just go back to it. So I did yeah. had I did had that, that mindset, but it changed mm. after the horizon as well. At any point, did you ever feel as though, especially when you were around those persons who had it, and you may not have had it at that point? At any point, did you feel as though I could never reach that level, or I could never acquire, or you had that mentality that? You could achieve such. I, 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 I always see, I've, I've always seen myself as somebody acquiring and gaining more. I've never limited myself whatsoever regarding, though it don't, don't matter where I'm at currently, mm -hmm. I would never compare myself to the other person to mm -hmm. say that, you know, hey, what are you doing? And I, I would congratulate you, I would applaud mm -hmm. you, and I would be motivated by what is going on for you. And I know that, you know, if you could do it, you're human just like me. Correct. I can go and achieve though and more. I don't I don't let you set I don't let you rule or measure my success. Ah, see you. Beautiful. Mr. Campbell, that vow of poverty that I think some persons take, as in they resign themselves to being poor. Or they feel as though that is their estate in life to be poor, you know. Um, God said the poor you will have with you always. And as you mentioned some of the things earlier concerning um uh, it's so tough for rich for the rich to go to heaven, and you just need to lay up treasures in heaven and not on the earth. Some people just accept poverty. How can they shift from that mindset to thinking, "Hey, I can have uh, my own home, I can have my own car, I can have a farm, I can I can be abundant and experience wealth." Mm -hmm. Before I respond to the question, let me throw in a stink bomb in this um, conversation here, schools and the education system. Because mm -hmm. you mentioned you know, this whole idea of educating. Schools and the education system were not designed to help anybody get rich. It was mm -hmm. designed to maintain a hierarchical structure where 
rich people continue to get rich at mm. the expense of poor, poor people. people. But maybe we can talk about that another time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, this whole, ag again, changing your mindset from one of poverty to abundance starts with an awareness that mm -hmm. this is how I'm thinking, first of all. Mm -hmm. This is how I'm thinking and my thinking is keeping me poor. The other thing that you, you need to do is to, you know, identify where did this thinking come from. Welcome back to Common Sense. As you would have just heard, a new level requires a new thinking. Kush, as we prepare to wrap up tonight's session, what advice would you give to what we call the ghetto youths, or what you call the dunstogs, as, they, um, as they're on their financial journey, uh, many of them uh, may not be exposed to the wisdom that you are exposed to uh, from your friends, uh, from your older colleagues, and even from your mother who instilled that contentment within you. What advice would you give to them to stay on the right path and to pursue legitimate means of earning and also to think about generational wealth? So, with regards to the mindset, the mindset is the first thing you understand. Uh, set a goal for yourself. Mm -hmm. The main thing you have to set a goal. Um, an advice I was given, I would like to, like, you know, just pass it on. Um, set mini goals mm -hmm. and achieve them. Yeah. You understand? And then after those mini goals, you start going wider and wider and bigger and bigger. And you just, when you realize it, the entire world is your ice store. One so, step at a time. Huh? Take it one step at a time. You gotta move fast, tippy toe. You tippy understand? Toe. Tippy toe. You understand? So it's all about it's all about knowing what you want at the end of the day. Because if they don't wander, I can't give somebody something that they don't want. They need to wander. You understand me? Mm. Me come here for bully nobody and tell nobody, hey, go and do this, say X, Y, Z. Those who want to learn and those who as aspire and reaching for greatness, they're going to tune into this, say, sir. They're going to listen and then they're going to apply themselves where they think they should apply themselves. So the advice for me, from me, get yeah, a book. It starts with a book. It starts with your company. Move away from a certain company because don't be around individuals with a limited mindset and would like to limit things. You facts, understand? Facts. So, Move out to the space, uh, like with what Mr. Campbell said, they understand me, that's something very, very, very major. Move out to the space of those individuals and then move into the space of individuals that could influence you, not only positively, but also financially. And contentment goes a long way. Yeah. Contentment is... I want, I, want, I want to give them something, you understand me? Mm -hmm. What I want to give you is this here, so I don't know it all, you understand me? And I'm on a learning curve also, I'm still learning. Nothing as I say, you understand me, or what I am speaking of currently is not gospel. Correct. You understand me? So we whatever, are learning, whatever, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So don't feel like I'm on no pedestal or no high heart speaking down on you. Mm -hmm. All of you on the same level. Facts. So as much as I give you advice, you come show me some of your experiences, and I can give you and receive advice from you. So that's the vibe. Chris, mm -hmm. Before you go. You're a rapper. You're common, common sense. <laughs> we can get some bars before you go. <laughs> some bar about financial literacy and generational wealth. I, well, me, I, 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 the person, um, well, I like, you know me, I, I, I like um, literature. Mm. Well, I love literature. Um, I'm a lover for the arts. Uh, I love politics, history, and war. So, some simple, like, Wasting time and space within Orion's belt. You could draw in my thoughts even if it's Michael Phelps. Because it's that deep. Salam alaikum to my Aki. Pulling strings like the Shakti. Meant to slave, rocking a boat, listening to Shanti. I move with a tribe, this is not a posse. And I don't praise no idly. I do like moving posse. If I would drink the wheelchair, an episode of the grassy, I know the grass ain't that green on the other side, so I be keeping it iry. And yes, my life is gold, my business they always mining, looking for perfect timing, board the market while they stalling, some vegetable for taxes, all I'm offering, look sunny, auntie calling, in some fishy business, so don't buy out all it, you want some sawfish, these packets playing in some dangerous waters mentally, and Marcus Garvey, Walter Rodney, look. I like to read about politics, history, and war. 
Astrology, astronomy, about the moons and stars. Who was the richest man? Man, so Musa, a man with all. Then I realized the richest man, he had peace of mind. Ah. Many books are lying, King. Who can move fast? And who hmm. really got the scar? A lot in Australia sent me a message from afar. He said, Hey, Kush, you bad. Now in competition with nobody else. You must be mad. Point, 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 the point, only point, person point. I want to be better than was the man I was yesterday. Yesterday, this is the plan. Nice. Yeah. Pick up yourself <laughs> ten <laughs> times there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't suffer so there. <laughs> As we close tonight, Mr. Campbell, what advice would you want to leave with our viewers uh, on how to shift their mindset and develop that abundance mindset and how to elevate their thinking? Well, I wasn't blessed with the ability to spit rhymes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to slow this down a little uh. bit. <laughs> you know. Um, I, I endorse everything that Coach said, and I want to add as a parent that you must bring your children into the conversation about how money, you know, runs in the house. If things are brown, let your children know that things are brown. Let them understand why things are difficult and, and what, what, where the cuts need to be made, and, and show them what you are doing so they can learn. So when they are ready to move off on their own, they don't have to start from scratch because they already have a template to work with. Um, we got to stop seeing children as 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 our pension Facts. you know create your own pension Facts. you know um you know so so that when they are ready to launch out you have something to give them so that they can take to the next generation rather than they they having to turn back and i i say invest i call it investing in the grave you know mm -hmm. you you dying because that's what we're doing mm -hmm. you dying and you, you your children have to be feeding money into that dying generation rather than, you know, uh, 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 providing for the one that is now coming up. And so that is, that is something. And listen, if you are a business person, teach your, your children about the business. What we do is we see them as cheap labor, mm. you know. I'm starting up another thing. Here. <laughs> you continue. You continue. <laughs> you know, what we, what we do when we have children that, 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 that are working for us is... You know, we tell them, you know, I'm mining you, so I ain't got to pay you. Mm. But it, it, more than just paying them like an employee, make them partners in the business. If you got a little shop, well, this shelf is for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so that they learn how to invest and so that they, they, they can take it. See, what happens is, I, I'm, I'm, go, I'm going back into what Coach said, mm. uh, you know, I, what he said earlier. What happens is you pass on and you're not able to, 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 to handle the business anymore, but you haven't, you haven't uh, passed on any of that business acumen. So you die and the business dies with you. They can oh, continue it into the next generation because you haven't taught them anything. Definitely. And picking back on that point, you own a shop. You can't just have your son or your daughter packing the shelves. And then when you pass off, he is clueless about how do I do my financial statements? When do I know to restock the shelves? When do I know to do this? How, how do I determine my profit? What are the expenses? What are the, the revenues that we're making? Because all you taught him was how to pack the shelves, where it is to go, where that to go. But take time to teach your children the nitty gritty of finance so that when you're gone, you leave an inheritance for them and then they can continue that generational wealth. So this is your boy Machu saying good night. Thank you very much for tuning in. I want to say a big Thank you to my two wonderful guests. When I was thinking who to do this first episode with, I didn't really have any challenges. I know exactly who I wanted. And I know that they've delivered, and I'm very grateful for that. So I want to encourage you guys to subscribe to the YouTube page, Common Sense. Follow us on Instagram, and you can follow us on Facebook at Amcore VPI. Do have a wonderful night. Stay safe.